All right, turn your Bibles to Zephaniah chapter 2. This is a continuation. We just read, uh, I just did this study on verse uh, chapter 1. Now we're going to do chapter 2, verse 1. Gather yourselves together, yea, gather together, O nation not desired. Before the decree bring forth, before the day pass, as the chaff. Uh, what's chaff? Chaff is the part of the wheat that you throw away that you can't eat. It's just the fluff. Before the decree bring forth, before the day pass, as the chaff, before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you, before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you, seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. Do you know that Jesus said that we should pray to escape all these things? In Luke 21, verse 36, it says, Watch ye therefore, and pray always, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. How many people pray that prayer? How many pre-trib rapture churches even tell their people about that? Zephaniah 2, verse 3, Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. For Gaza shall be forsaken, and Ashkelon a desolation. They shall drive out Ashdod at the noonday, and Ekron shall be rooted up. Uh, all these areas were where the uh, Canaanites lived. Verse 5. Woe unto the inhabitants of the seacoast, the nation of the Cherites. The word of the Lord is against you, O Canaan, the land of the Philistines. I will even destroy thee, that there shall be no inhabitant. Who were the Philistines? Goliath, the giant, was a Philistine. He was a member of the Canaanite tribes. The word of the Lord is against you, O Canaan, the land of the Philistines. I will even destroy thee, and there shall be no inhabitant. I know the churches love to teach that the Palestinians are the Philistines. Well, you know, I haven't seen any... Uh, 12 or 20 foot Palestinians, have you? So evidently they're not the Philistines. Verse 6 And the seacoast shall be dwellings and cottages for shepherds and folds for flocks. And the coast shall be for the remnant of the house of Judah. They shall feed thereupon in the houses of Ashkelon. They shall lie down in the evening, for the Lord their God shall visit them and turn away their captivity. I have heard the reproach of Moab. Now, Moab and Ammon were the children from the incestuous relationship of Lot when his daughters got him drunk and did it with him. And evidently, it doesn't say, but evidently, I'm, I'm going to have to assume that these children went out and intermarried with the Canaanites because they were bad. Um, just because you have an incestuous relationship doesn't, I don't know. I just, it just, it would make sense that they intermarried with the Canaanites. And uh, the Lord's not pleased with Moab and Ammon. And no, Lot was drunk. He didn't know what his daughters had done. I don't see how he could not know, but I don't know. 
I have heard the reproach of Moab and the revilings of the children of Ammon, whereby they have reproached my people and magnified themselves against their border. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, surely Moab shall be as Sodom and the children of Ammon as Gomorrah. Even the breeding of nettles and salt pits and a perpetual desolation. The residue of my people shall spoil them, and the remnant of my people shall possess them. They shall, I'm sorry, this shall they have for their pride, because they have reproached and magnified themselves against the people of the Lord of hosts. The Lord will be terrible unto them, for he will famish all the gods of the earth. And men shall worship him, every one from his place, even all the isles of the heathen. Ye Ethiopians also, ye shall be slain by my sword. Ethiopia, the Ethiopians. What uh, group of people lives in Ethiopia? That doesn't sound very good for the Ethiopians. And there's a rumor going around that the Ethiopians, uh, there's a king of Ethiopia that was a son of Solomon, the king of queen, when he married the queen of Sheba or whatever, and that they have the Ark of the Covenant. Uh, I don't think so. If, if they do find a so-called Ark of the Covenant, I bet you it's a fake that they built so that they can rebuild their temple. But, uh, I wish somebody would read this to the uh, so-called black Hebrews. Ye Ethiopians also shall, ye shall be slain by my sword. It doesn't sound very good for, the, for Ethiopia, does it? Verse 13. And he will stretch out his hand against the north and destroy Assyria, and make Nineveh a desolation and dry like a wilderness. Now, Nineveh was the capital of the Assyrian Empire. That was the place where Jonah went to preach. And they repented in sackcloth and ashes, and they turned from their wicked ways, and the Lord didn't destroy them. But evidently, they went back to their old ways, and he's going to destroy Nineveh. And the Assyrians came in and conquered Israel, the northern kingdom of Israel, and took them captive. So, God will use wicked people to punish his people. And then he will destroy them in their wickedness. God doesn't like wickedness. And he will stretch out his hand against the north and destroy Assyria and make Nineveh a desolation and dry like a wilderness. And flock shall lie down in the midst of her. All the beasts of the nation, both the Comorant and the Bittern, shall lodge in the upper lintels of it. Their voice shall sing in the windows. Desolation shall be in the thresholds, for he shall uncover the cedar work. This is the rejoicing city that dwelt carelessly, that said in her heart, I am, and there is none beside me. How is she become a desolation, a place for beasts to lie down in? Everyone that passeth by her shall hiss and wag his hand. Hmm. This is the rejoicing city that dwelt carelessly, that said in her heart, I am, I am. That's what, remember uh, when God came to Moses, and Moses said, well, you know, you want me to go to the children of Israel in Egypt and tell them that God wants us, you know, to, to save us. But uh, there's a lot of gods in Egypt, you know. Uh, so, so what is your name? When they ask me, well, what's this God's name? Uh, what am I going to tell them? I'm paraphrasing. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. Tell them that I am hath sent you. When, you know, when the Pharisees were having their discourse with Jesus, 
He said, before Abraham was, I am. The Jews knew exactly what Jesus was saying. Jesus was saying he was the I am in the days of Moses. And they didn't like that. They wanted to kill him. Let's compare Zephaniah with Revelation chapter 18. So, this is the rejoicing city that dwelt carelessly, that said in her heart, I am, and there is none beside me. How has she become a desolation, a place for beasts to lie down in? Everyone that passeth by her shall hiss and wag his hand. Let's take a look at Revelation 18, when they're talking about Babylon. 18.1 And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen. Why twice? Uh, a physical fallen and then a spiritual falling? I don't know. That's kind of how I look at it, but if you got a different view, that's fine, because I don't have any lock on truth, that's for sure. Saying, Babylon is fallen, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations, all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. Good advice. Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double, according to her works, in the cup which she hath filled, filled to her double. How much she hath glorified herself, and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. Listen to this. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Let's go back to Zephaniah. This is the rejoicing city that dwelt carelessly, that said, that said in her heart, I am, and there is none beside me. Hmm. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Revelation 18.8 8. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death, and mourning, and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God, who judgeth her. And the kings of the earth, who have committed fornication, and lived deliciously with her, shall bewail her, and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. Standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. Come, and the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more. Let's go back to Zephaniah chapter 2 and verse 15. This is the rejoicing city that dwelt carelessly, that said in her heart, I am, and there is none beside me. How has she become a desolation, a place for beasts to lie down in? Everyone that passeth by her shall hiss and wag his hand. It kind of reminds me of uh, Mystery Babylon. I'm not so sure it's the same thing, but it's an interesting thing. So, um, let 
And in verse 24 of Revelation 18, it says, And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. All right, well, this is uh, the end of Zephaniah chapter 2. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is the Day of the Lord series. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. That's Jesus, who is the Christ. In his precious name, amen.